Welcome everybody. This is the scene we're going to be making today using blender fluids. In an upcoming video I will be doing a similar scene using flip fluids. Hope everybody enjoys. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit num 1 on our numpad. And we're going to actually go ahead and scale this cube up a little bit. I'm going to scroll back a little bit. We're going to press Shift D to duplicate this object and we're going to place it right about here. And then we're going to go ahead, I'm going to go over to our physics tab and add a rigid body to both of these objects. Let's go ahead and actually bring this cube up a little bit. I'm just going to bring it up on the z-axis to about there. And shift A, we're going to add in our plane. I'm going to scale this up about there. Rigid body. And we're going to set this to passive. You can alternatively click active and then uncheck dynamic, but I'm not going to worry about that in this scene. I'm going to go ahead and hit play and see how our cube reacts. That's not bad, but I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher on the Z to about there. I'm going to hit play one more time. Once it looks good, come over here to this tab. Uh, I think it's the context tab. I'm going to click rigid body world, click cache, and then click bake. I'm going to just bake in our all of the frames here. Basically it's going to save the animation which we'll need for our fluids. I'm going to go back to the first frame. I'm going to press Z to go into wireframe mode. And then we're going to press Shift D to duplicate the cube and then we're going to scale it in a little bit. Like that. Same thing on this one. Shift D to duplicate. Right, uh, right click to keep it in place and then scale it down a little bit. I'm actually going to make this one smaller so we have a little bit more of a sloshing effect. I'm going to go back to our physics tab. We're going to uncheck rigid body. So we're going to add fluid. And then we're going to make this our fluid as well. Then we're going to check this box. We're going to add fluid and it's going to be an obstacle. When we do obstacle, you want to go ahead and change the volume initialization to shell and export animated mesh, which is why we baked it. Uh, in the world tab. I'm going to go ahead and add, let's see what I'm going to add to this one. Fluid, obstacle, change it to shell, animated mesh. I'm going to click on that box right there, which will be, which is our fluid. I'm going to click fluid, set it as fluid. I'm going to leave that the same. And dynamic, that looks good. Said unsure. Oh yes, we need to get rid of the rigid body. If you didn't duplicate the cube, you won't have a rigid body, so it won't be that big of a deal. Just double check to make sure we have shell clicked on our container and export animation. And that looks perfect. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add in another cube. We're gonna scale this up to about there. GZ to move it up on the G or the Z axis. And then we're going to just hit play to make sure that this cube stays in that bounds. Now it's close, so I'm actually going to press S and then Shift C to scale up our domain a little bit bigger. And then we're going to go ahead and click Fluid and we're going to make this our domain. Now, all if you're brand new to Blender Fluids, you need to make sure that all the fluid simulations happen in this domain. So if this cube were to bounce outside of the domain, the water will not follow it and cut it right in half. We're going to go ahead and change the resolution to 300. And we're going to change our time to about 10.2 seconds because that's pretty close to what 250 frames is if you're running the standard frame rate. I'm going to go down to boundary and we're going to uncheck remove air bubbles. And then we're going to go ahead and hit bake. Now that should take about 20, 20 minutes, depending on your computer. It's anywhere from 15 to 40 minutes on my computer. It's about a 20 minute process. So we'll see you in 20 minutes. All right, now that we're done with the bacon, let's go ahead and take a look and see what it looks like. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to go ahead and get rid of our rigid bodies, which normally speaking right here, you should name all of them. I did not do that this time. Traditionally speaking, I do. But we're going to go ahead and come down to the context tab and we're just going to remove the rigid body world because we don't need these cubes anymore. 
or the data, but I'm going to move them out of the way because I tend to save things. And with the fluid, we're actually going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're just going to move it out of the way. And I'm going to press play and make sure that everything looks right. And that looks about right. So we're going to go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and click on the fluid objects. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and add smooth shading to it. I'm pressing space and typing out the word smooth. And then I'm going to press control three and we're going to give it a subdivision of three to give it a little bit smoother look. All right, not too bad. Now we're going to go ahead and take this floor and we're going to press Shift D to duplicate it. I'm going to rotate it on the X axis by 90. And then we're just going to drag it there and we're just going to make a nice little box for everything to hide. And duplicate it again. Rotate it on the Z 90 degrees. GY. And GX just moving it over. And press Shift D to duplicate that. And then I'm going to press 0 on the numpad to look through the camera view and then shift F to move around using your ASD keys to about where you want it. it should be about there. We're going to play the animation and that doesn't look too bad. <clears throat> so now we're going to come up to our uh, render tab and we're going to click on cycles and then shift Z to kind of see what we have going on here. Let's go ahead and render this on the GPU so my computer doesn't get too loud. And let's change the world here. And this is set this scene up any way you want as far as the lighting goes, but I'm kind of doing it a quick and dirty way. So I'm just basically cranking up the world light, which is not really the best way to do things. And then I'm going to click on the light here and I'm just going to turn it to sun. And let's lower the strength down to about two. All right, and then I'm just gonna move it out of the scene altogether. Now we're gonna go ahead and click on our fluid domain. We're gonna give it some color. Now let's go ahead and <clears throat> change it. Oh, we'll just use glass. Change the roughness down to zero, the ORI to about 1.34. And let's give it a nice little color there. Let's go ahead and set our background up. So I'm going to hit new. Once I click one of these planes here, we're going to change the base color to a brick. Let's actually do checkered. Nice checkered color. And then we're just going to apply this to all the other materials. I'm just shift clicking each plane. And then I'm going to come down here to the material I just made. And then I'm going to press the down arrow and click copied materials to selected. There we go. Then we can get a better view of what our actual fluid material is going to look like. That's a better color. <clears throat> and we can kind of watch it come down through here and just watch it bounce. And that is really going to be it. Now if you want to go ahead and render this out, if you're rendering on a GPU, go ahead and select CPU. If you're rendering it out on a CPU, you're crazy, uh, which you can do but it takes a lot more. So I'm going to be rendering on my GPU, so I'm going to go ahead and change my tile size to something more adequate, which will be about 256. Uh, I could do 512, but it's not really any difference on the performance. Uh, if you want to get rid of some of these sparkles, you can uh, change your clamp, direct and indirect, which is under light paths. And I'm going to change mine to probably about a 7. The lower you go, the more clamping that's done. So 10 is, is kind of ideal for the more realistic, but this is a fluid simulation, so realism isn't the most important thing in this particular scene. And I will probably render a little bit higher, about 150 frames. And then you can just go ahead and render out the way you normally would. If you're not used to rendering out scenes, I'll give you a little bit of tips here. Come to your tab here, uh, the output tab. Select the directory you want to put it in. Uh, I'll just shove it on my desktop with all the millions of other things I have. And normally speaking, I do images one by one. If you do images and then paste them all together, you can just leave it just like that. <clears throat> if you want to do a movie, go to FFMPEG video. And then under encoding, come down here and click MP4 and then whatever qualities. Normally speaking, I'll do high quality and encoding speed real time. Uh, that makes a little bit bigger file, but I'm not too worried about that. 
And then other than that, you just go ahead and press Control 12 and then you render out your scene. And we'll render one or two frames to see what everything looks like. It shouldn't be too bad the first couple of scenes. I am only rendering on one GPU. Well, that's going to take a little bit longer. But not too bad, but you can kind of see the effect we get here. It looks pretty good. I hope everybody enjoyed the video, and if you did, please like and subscribe. It gives me encouragement to get up in the morning and make some more videos. All right, take care.